Greetings from the Italian American Veterans Museum. My name is Lorenzo Fiorentino, and I'm a retired Army Major and the second Vice President for the museum. Our mission is to celebrate a legacy of Italian American bravery, explore our nation's military history, and offer comfort and support to veterans of all backgrounds. As part of that mission, we regularly host presentations on military themes. Today, I'll be discussing my book, Illinois Military Monuments. I decided to write this book in order to capture in pictures monuments for prosperity, some of which are disappearing. And more importantly, to honor our Illinois hometown heroes who those monuments are represented of. In 1869, Bloomington erected in the center of Franklin Square to commemorate the McLean County citizens who died in the Civil War. Over the years, the monument began to disintegrate. A committee was created in order to fix the monument. But unfortunately, the material of which the monument was constructed was so perishable that the entire monument was in danger of collapsing. Former Governor Joseph Pfeiffer lobbied for the city to tear down the monument and build a new one in Miller Park in Bloomington. The lower half of the monument was saved and is currently located at the Bloomington Narrow neighborhood of Briarwood. Elmwood Park had a World War II U.S. Army M3 Stewart tank as its memorial from 1947 to 1998. In 1970, it was moved from its original location on Grand Avenue to the Circle. In 1999, it was sent to the Kenosha Military Museum and replaced by an artillery gun. This photo shows the 1st Infantry Regiment Armory of the Illinois Army National Guard. The 1st Infantry Armory, aka 1st Regimental Armory or the 131st Infantry Armory, was located at the northwest corner of South Michigan Avenue and East 16th Street. It was built in 1891 and demolished in 1967. The 1st Infantry Regiment of the Illinois National Guard was mustered into federal service in April of 1917. In October of 1917, it was redesignated the 131 Infantry and assigned to the 33rd Division. In May of 1918, it arrived in France with the division and they participated in the Somme and Meuse Argonne offensives from August 8, 1918 till November 11, 1918. In June of 1919, they were demobilized at Camp Grant and recognized as the 1st Infantry National Guard. On December 13, 1921, the 1st was redesignated as the 131st Infantry and assigned to the 33rd Division. This monument on the right commemorates Fort Dearborn. It was built in 1803 besides the Chicago River. It was burnt down in 1812 during the War of 1812, and the second fort was reconstructed on the same site in 1816. In 1837, the fort was decommissioned. Parts of the fort were lost to the widening of the Chicago River, and there was a Chicago fire in 1857. The last vestiges of the fort were destroyed in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. This memorial is all that exists of where it once stood. The postcard depicts the 120th anniversary of the Fort Dearborn Massacre of 1812 during a century of progress during the Chicago World's Fair in 1933. A dedication was held on October 7, 1896 for the Civil War soldiers that fought and were honored in the Hope Cemetery in Galesburg. Robert Todd Lincoln, son of President Lincoln and himself a Civil War veteran, gave a speech in front of the pedestal. If you notice the picture to the left, there's no soldier yet. However, uh, schedules being as they were, the president's son could only be there on that specific date, so they went ahead with the dedication anyway. The picture on the right is the monument as it stands today. This monument is Peoria Civil War Monument, and affectionately named the Shaft. 
It was dedicated on October 11th, 1866 to the over 600 Peoria Union Civil War soldiers who gave their lives to help preserve the Union. This monument may have been the first of its kind in Illinois and perhaps one of the first of its kind in the nation. It stood on the courthouse lawn for 96 years before it was dismantled in 1862 to make way for a new courthouse. On October 12, 2019, a remembrance ceremony was held and was dedicated on the Springfield Cemetery in Peoria, the picture on the bottom right. It is also located just inside the cemetery entrance on Prospect Road. So what happened between 1962 and 2019? Some pieces of the monument ended up being destroyed. Other pieces ended up in the marina where they were forgotten for 55 years. The quarry that produced the monument, fortunately, was still in business and still had the original plans of the monument. So they were able to restore it, including, as you see at the top of the monument, Old Abe to its original glory. The Task Force Phoenix Memorial that was dedicated at Camp Phoenix, located just outside of Kabul, Afghanistan on August 29, 2009. It remained in place until the base was closed in 2016. And then it was removed and sent to the headquarters of the 33rd Infantry Brigade in Urbana, Illinois. Phoenix lost 43 warriors, including two French, two Latvians, three Afghan interpreters, 36 Americans from different components and states. 18 of those were from Illinois. The 33rd Infantry Brigade served in Afghanistan from October 28, 2008 to August 29, 2009. The overseas deployment to Afghanistan of nearly 3,000 Illinois National Guard soldiers from 30 units across the state was the largest in state history since World War II. The 33rd Infantry Brigade was awarded the Joint Meritorious Unit Award. Illinois Lions have served our state and nation for nearly 300 years. Under the French and Kaskaskia, residents participated in the first militia muster in 1723. In 1728 and 1729, Illinois militia joined Colonel George Rogers, Clark, and fought the British contributing to the victories of the American Revolution. Captain Abraham Lincoln enlisted during the Black Hawk Wars, becoming a member of the Illinois Militia on April 21, 1832. During the Civil War, 250,000 Illinois Militia served. In 1918, Colonel Otis Duncan became the highest ranking African American soldier in the entire American Expeditionary Force during World War I. In 1942, soldiers from Company B, 192nd Tank Battalion, suffered severe hardships as field W's at the hands of the Japanese during the Bataan Death March. During Korea, many Illinoisans were used as, uh, to muster into units that were deploying for active duty. During Vietnam, pretty much the same thing. However, one Illinois unit was deployed in its entirety, the 126 Applying Services Company. During the Gulf War, the 233rd Military Police Company and the 1644th Transportation Company were deployed. During the Global War on Terror, many, many, many units have been deployed. And of course, throughout the Illinois National Guard's history, we have taken part in peacekeeping missions throughout the world. Illinois Guardsmen have earned 113 Medals of Honor. General George Rogers Clark, was an American surveyor, soldier, and militia officer from Virginia who became the highest ranking American Patriot military officer on the Northwestern frontier during the American Revolutionary War. He served as a leader of the militia in Kentucky throughout much of the war. He is best known and celebrated uh, for the captures of Kaskaskia and Vincennes in 1778 and 1779 during the Illinois campaign which greatly weakened the British influence in the Northwest Territory. The British ceded the entire Northwest Territory to the United States in 1783 during the Treaty of Paris. And Clark has often been hailed the conqueror of the Old Northwest. 
Clark's major military achievements occurred before the age of 30. Afterward, he left. He led the militia in opening engagements of the Northwest Indian Wars, but was accused of being drunk on duty. He was disgraced and forced to resign, despite his demand for a formal investigation into the accusations they never claimed. He left Kentucky to live on Indiana frontier, but was never fully reimbursed by Virginia for his wartime expenditures. During the final decades of his life, he worked to evade creditors and suffered living in increasing poverty and obscurity. He was involved in two failed attempts to open the Spanish-controlled Mississippi River to American traffic. After suffering a stroke and the amputation of his left leg, he became an invalid. He was aided in his final years by family members, including his younger brother, William, one of the leaders of the Lewis and Clark expedition. He died of a stroke on February 13, 1818. Otis Beverly Duncan was an American officer in the United States Army. He was the highest ranked American, African-American in the American Expeditionary Forces at the end of World War I, serving as a Lieutenant Colonel in the 370th Infantry Regiment. Illinois paid for the training of an all African-American regiment within the Illinois National Guard. The units organized in the 1870s and was the 8th Illinois Infantry. If you see the, on the left side of the screen, that's a monument that currently stands in the Bronzeville neighborhood of Chicago. It commemorates the 8th Infantry. Duncan entered the Illinois National Guard in 1902. He was assigned to the 8th Illinois and commissioned as an officer. When the 8th Illinois was called into national service during the Pancho Villa expedition into Mexico in 1916, Duncan served as a major on the regimental staff. After the American entry into World War I in April of 1917, the 8th Illinois, still in national service, was renamed the 370th Infantry Regiment. It was the only African-American regiment to go into the American Expeditionary Force while retaining most of its African-American command structure. Duncan was awarded a Purple Heart and the French Corps de Guerre for gallantry. After the war, the 370th Infantry reverted to its pre-war status as the 8th Illinois Infantry, and Duncan was promoted on March 18, 1919, to the rank of Colonel and Commander of the Regiment. Colonel Duncan retired as the head of the Chicago State Education Bureau in 1929. Today, it's known as the Illinois State Board of Education. Lieutenant General Milton Foreman was born in Chicago. He was a hero of the Spanish-American War, the Mexican Border Service Campaign, and World War I. In the, in the Spanish-American War, he enlisted it in the Army as a private in the 1st Cavalry on December 5, 1895. He worked his way up the ranks until he was a captain. In the Mexican Border Service, he was a colonel commanding the 1st Cavalry Division of the Illinois National Guard. He received the Distinguished Service Cross for bravery in World War I while serving in France. Here's what he did. When his unit came under heavy artillery and machine gun fire, he crept through the German gunfire, laying out telephone wires so that he could tell his artillery where the enemy had its gun positions. Foreman found the enemy gun positions and directed his artillery to lay down a barrage of shells to destroy them. Talk about not asking your men to do anything you're not willing to do. Over his career, General Foreman was awarded for bravery the Distinguished Service Cross, the Distinguished Service Medal, Silver Star Citations, the French Legion of Honor, and the Belgian Order of the Crown. During World War II, Foreman was honored when a Merchant Liberty ship was named the USS Correction, the SS Foreman. He was promoted to Brigadier General on June 23, 1920, and a Major General on March 19, 1921. Upon his retirement in 1931, he was promoted to Lieutenant General. General Foreman was one of the organizers of the American Legion and was elected as the chairman of its first executive committee at the Paris Caucus 
at which he represented Illinois. Colonel John J. Harding was born in Frankfort, Kentucky. He was a U.S. representative and a militia general from Illinois. He served in the Illinois militia during the Black Hawk Wars of 1832. He was a brigadier general in command during the Illinois Mormon War in Hancock County in 1844. For those of you who don't know, the um, Mormon Wars were a conflict between the Latter-day Saints and their neighbors uh, in which they lived in uh, Hancock County. After that war was over, he was later promoted to the rank of Major General. He was appointed prosecuting attorney of Morgan County in 1832. He served as a member of the Illinois House of Representatives in 1836 till 1842. He was co-editor and founder of the Illinois newspaper in Jacksonville in 1837. He was credited with helping to avert a duel between Abraham Lincoln and state auditor James Shields. In February 1844, Hardin was present on the USS Princeton when, the guns, when the, one of its main guns exploded, and he helped manage the aftermath of the disaster, staying on board for nearly a week. He recruited the 1st Regiment Illinois Volunteer Infantry, of which he was commissioned a colonel, and in February of 1847, he was killed at the Battle of Buena Vista, Mexico, after attempting to lead a charge against the Mexican uh, battery. The outpouring of grief in his death was so immense and Hardin's funeral procession was attended by 15,000 people back then. That number is humongous. He was interred in the city cemetery in Jacksonville, Illinois. Hardin County and several others are named in his honor. Abraham Lincoln, Illinois State Representative, United States Congressman, 16th President of the United States of America. He served as a captain in the Illinois militia during the Black Hawk War. In 1832, in the rifle company of the 31st Regiment Militia of Sagamon County, 1st Division. Lincoln never saw combat during this war, but he was elected captain of his first company. He was also present in the aftermath of two of the war's battles where he helped to bury the militia dead. On June 26, 1832, the morning after the Second Battle of Kellogg's Grove, members of his company arrived at Kellogg's Grove to help bury the dead. Lincoln assisted with the burial and later made a statement about his experience. I remember just how those men looked as we rode up on the little hill where their camp was. The red light of the morning sun was streaming upon them as they lay head towards us on the ground. And every man had a round red spot on the top of his head, about as big as a dollar where the redskins had taken his scalp. It was frightful. It was grotesque, and the red sunlight seemed to paint everything all over. The monument you see on the left is currently in Dixon, Illinois. The photo you see on the right is about a Potawatomi Indian who um, accidentally stumbled upon his camp right after they had gotten done burying uh, their dead comrades. Uh, in order to show uh, Lincoln's qualities of honesty, courageousness, and competent leadership, this story has been told several times throughout history. Lincoln's men wanted to kill the Indian. However, Abraham Lincoln put himself between his men and the Indian and said that that was not going to happen. Things got heated, but after a few minutes of uh, heated arguments, the, his men stood down. Colonel Robert McCormick is shown on the left in his World War I uniform. He was a force of nature in Illinois politics for many decades. He was published of the Chicago Daily Tribune, the founder of WGN Radio in 1924, and the founder of WGN TV in 1948. For those of you who may not know, WGN stood for the world's greatest newspaper, the slogan of the Tribune. The Cantigny Woods Military Museum and Conference Center is west of Chicago, was Colonel McCormick's home. He dedicated to his beloved 1st Infantry Division and to, till this day acts as a museum and a place where people can go and reflect and understand and the beauty of what he believed to be uh, his gardens 
and he made it in an image to look like Cantigny in France. On the right, you see, he is seen inspecting the 1st Illinois Cavalry. Veterans of the 134th Illinois Volunteer Infantry assemble in Chicago to remember their fallen. This photo is from 1885. The 134th Regiment, Illinois Volunteer Infantry, was an infantry regiment that served in the Union Army during the American Civil War. They were among the scores of regiments that were raised in the summer of 1864 and known as the Hundred Days Men in an effort to augment existing manpower and for an all-out push to the end of the war within 100 days. That was their own version of the surge, right, that we all heard about during, desert, uh, during the Iraq and Afghan wars. However, the surge lasted a lot longer than 100 days, as we all know. Grandsons of Veterans Pioneer Squad Number One it is pictured above, and it, it was dedicated in 1910, that photo was taken. They were organized in 1908. The eligibility for grandsons, the eligibility was for grandsons of Mexican, Civil War, or Spanish American War veterans. Veterans. The banner picture with the group reads Pioneer Squad Number One, Grandsons of Veterans, Austin, Chicago, Hurrah for Grand. The monument on the right is located on the west end of East End Avenue at the corner of Austin Avenue. This monument was dedicated in 1949 by the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 2955 in honor of all those who had served in our nation's wars. 1918 Third Liberty Loan Parade in Rockford. The Liberty Bond or Liberty Loan was a war bond that was sold in the United States to support the Allied cause in World War I. Subscribing to the bonds became a symbol of patriotic duty in the United States and introduced the idea of financial securities to many citizens for the first time. Parades, military and veteran, were organized in order to boost sales. It became a status symbol to take part in these parades and take part in these rallies. It showed that you supported the war and that you supported our veterans and their families. Founded in 1932 and chartered by Congress in 1981, the Italian American War Veterans of the United States and its women's auxiliaries assist veterans for both gen of both genders and all national origins. The State Command sponsors an essay contest in spring and the Veterans Day Mass in November. They provide color guards for parades and other special events and installs their officers at its annual convention of a Memorial Day weekend. Among the many proud moments in the long and distinguished history of the State Command are the elections of six local leaders as national commanders and the election of six auxiliary members as national presidents. Pictured here is the flag of the Filippo Maize post number one on the right, and on the left is the dedication to their uh, organization at the Italian American Veterans Museum. This plaque is part of the Maywood Park Veterans Memorial. It honors soldiers of Company B of the 192nd Tank Battalion, which was stationed in Maywood. The battalion deployed to the Philippines during World War II with 593 soldiers. They were part of the infamous Bataan Death March. They returned to Maywood. Their return to Maywood was not as nice. Only 300, 328 soldiers did not return from the Philippines. Societa Filarmonica Bella Italia Honor Plaque. On October 30th, 2019, the Veterans Museum accepted the donation of this bronze plaque from the far south side Italian American community. The plaque was commissioned by the Societa Filarmonica Bella Italia to honor World War II veterans and contains the names of 125 mostly Italian American. They had languished in the garage on the far south side in the printer's office until 2014, when it was discovered by a local historian, Tom Shepard, and his friend, Don Bobino. Shepard oversaw the plaque's restoration 
And now those veterans will be forever memorialized at the Italian American Veterans Museum. The 126 Supply and Services Company, on November, 20, November 1st, 2016, the 126 Supply and Services Company was reactivated. If you remember, this was the unit that was activated to take part in Vietnam. It was reactivated as the 126 Quartermaster Company in Quincy. The 126 Supply and Services Company was the only Illinois unit deployed to Vietnam in its entirety, where it served from 1968 to 1969. The Quincy, Illinois-based new 126 Company was awarded the lineage and honors of the old 126, including the unit service in Vietnam. Vito R. Bertoldi. Vito was a United States Army soldier, a veteran of World War II, and the recipient of the Medal of Honor for his actions in Hatton, France in January 1945. Bertoldi was born and raised in Decatur, Illinois, and worked as a coal miner and truck driver. Though he was exempt from the World War II draft because of poor eyesight, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and deployed to France with the 42nd Infantry Division. During Germany's Operation North Wind Offensive of December 1944 to January 1945, Bertoldi was one of the soldiers assigned to guard the command post for the 1st Battalion, 242nd Infantry Regiment. When the battalion staff moved to an alternative location while expecting the German attack, Bertoldi volunteered to cover them and defend the command post. On January 9, 1945, he single handedly fought off German assaults on the command post and then continued the fight by taking part in the defensive of the battalion's alternative command post. After the war, he was presented the Medal of Honor for, her, for his heroism by former by President Truman. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at Lorenzo A. Fiorentino at yahoo.com. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.